All right, guys, new season. Welcome back. Now, of course, Group A in the Champions League because it's us. Just going to do one change. So Tim's coming from Western Suburbs because, unfortunately, we've lost Tao and also Kevin because money and we like money and so do they. So we're going to try two central defenders instead of a ball playing defender. I know that might offend you, Georgios, because you're really good at that. But you could be the bench impact if we're struggling, okay? So I need you this season. But we've got two good centre backs now. Tim and Ollie. Let's try and suit them. And just make sure we learn it throughout the Champions League. So we can win it and then take it on to the National League, okay? Slight change. Nothing too big. Let's just adapt and keep winning. Welcome to episode number 108 of the New Zealand Builder Nation here on Sean Does FM with both the All Whites and with Cash Me and Nicholas Come up today, we start off 2035 with the group stage of the OFC Champions League. Going to take on Kiwi in the first game of that group. Probably go fall off the back of that and then see who we'll be taking on in the quarters and semis and also do a little bit of a transfer recap as well. So, if you're looking forward to all that coming up with Cash Me Tech in today's episode, then do remember. To go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated, but first things first, we come into this off the back of the National League Grand Final at the end of last week, at least in terms of the working week here in New Zealand, where as per usual, we took on Auckland City, so if you missed that one, I'll leave a link to it. I was in the top right corner, actually, no end of season review off the back of that, and it doesn't come up here as we make our way into the group stage of the OFC Champions League, so not too sure why that was the case for that one season, but as per usual, we are in Group A or B of the Champions League, as it turns out, we're in Group A to get things underway here in the second game of this season's Champions League. Here's our group. AS Parade from Tahiti, pretty sure that's a team we've taken on the knockouts before of this competition. Also, Kaguro Labe from PNG, I think we also took those guys on maybe in the group stage the last couple of seasons. But Kiwi from Samoa, which is pretty ironic considering that we're a New Zealand team. They are who we'll be taking on in this first game of our group. Looking at the rest of the groups here, Group B, that is made up of Bar, the Solomon Warriors, Tafia and Tigger Sports. So a couple of teams there that we have taken on in the knockouts of the Champions League before then Group C. These other groups kick off about a week or two off the back of our group, so it does suit them with a bigger preseason. But Group C, AS Lossi, Blue Kumuls SC, Hamoko, and Waniago. Again, a couple of teams there we've taken on in the past in Group D. That is where we'll find our main challenges yet again in Auckland City. They're also joined by AS Dragon Labasa and the Tiomo Academy out of Vanuatu. So those are the groups. For this season's Champions League, should be getting through the stage pretty comfortably, but we are doing so off the back of a couple of months since that National League Grand Final, and it does mean we have got for a little bit of a transfer window, have got rid of some notable players because the money was too good to turn down in the ice. We'll go over here and have a look at our transfer history and just sort this out by date because this does still include last season because technically we're still in last season, but we'll start off here over on the right hand side because all our incomings they are free and to be fair not too many of them are first team players but lost a couple of key players going in to this new season the first one is the biggest one Kevin Mina went off to the San Jose Earthquakes for a fee of £165,000 of that one of the highest transfer fees we've received here so far at Kashmir Tech but Kevin Mina there was some interest coming in him from Saudi Arabian clubs he wanted to go there but the fees were too low at that stage. But the MLS clubs, they did go over the £150,000 threshold that we did set for him. Now he's over in America. That value is quite good. Still actually surprised he's been given a cap yet for Ecuador. So a bit frustrating that that fee was triggered and we couldn't keep hold of him. But Kevin Mina was the backup these days to CR Diallo in that left wing position. And to be fair, still got Henrik Fries down the B team. So left wing is quite a deep area. At Kashmir, Texas Kevin Mina, he goes over to join one of our other former players, the All-White, and Justin Keat over at the San Jose Earthquakes. Let's see how he gets on off the back of a number of really good seasons here in New Zealand with Kashmir Tech. A little bit frustrating, couldn't keep him 
for about another two years long, because I think that's all he had left before he would have become eligible for the All Whites. So Kevin Mina, a big departure, albeit that doesn't really affect us too much in terms of the first team. One that does is Teo De Niro, albeit to be fair, he would have been 20 years old this season, so wouldn't have counted as one of our under-20 players, but he has gone back to Brazil the same reason as Kevin Mina. A couple of bids came in for him which were undervalued. We agreed a fee for him of, I think it was £25,000, and that did get triggered by AS Confiasa. Back in Brazil in Serie B, so he's gone back to his homeland there. Here's Teo De Miro. We have replaced him, though, with a pretty decent local player, but those are the two main ones that have departed us off the back of the end of last week. Also leaving some players who were pretty much fringe ones here at Kashmir Tech. Alan Bittencourt has gone to Real Zara Gofa over in Spain. To be fair, as you can tell by the attributes, not too bad a player, but he was on a non-contract here at Kashmir Tech. Couldn't do too much there to try and keep him at the club, especially when Real Zara Gofa down in La Liga 2 are the team who are hunting him. So maybe she'll give him a bit more game time while we hit him there at Kashmir Tech. And also Brian Davis, who was a bit of a third, fourth choice striker for us for a wee while there, the American, he has gone back to the US to join Phoenix off the back of scoring quite a few goals for the B team, but not getting too much of a chance with the first team itself. So lost a couple of players there going into this new season. Also did release a couple, including the only legend at the club who was a player in Nathan Walker. He just was a bit average these days. We let him go and Christchurch United have picked him up. So I have to play against the club legend later this season. I say might have to, will have to, when we take on Christchurch United in the Southern League. And also Leon Sutton, we let him go, seeing as we brought in Jack Honey last season, who was a bit of an upgrade. And he has gone up to Birkenhead, who are in the second division of the Northern League. So that's what's happened to a couple of players from our first team last season. We have, though, brought in some to replace them. We'll just go back over to all transfers and sort this out again by the right date. Five players have come in. First up, Pascal Ponzi on a free from the Western Sydney Wanderers Academy. To be fair, I thought he might be a bit better than what he is, especially on a wage of £1.2,000 a week. But he'll be okay as a squad player. We'll probably spend most of his time here, though, in the B team. Well, Pascal Ponzi, the player formerly of the Western Sydney Wanderers, also joining us for a couple of young prospects who are definitely going to be sitting down in the under-20s and the B team. First up, Francisco Javier Mora. He is another left winger out of America. Three-star current ability, three-star potential. When we signed him, that potential was a lot higher. Also, in the B slash under-20, Sadio Diacate, two-star current ability, four-star potential, central attacking midfielder. So an extra option there if there's issues with Lorenzo Jansen and Jamie Young. And also Luis Coloso, who is out of Ecuador, two-star current ability, but five-star potential, a left back, who is an under-20 player, albeit he does come here with an injury, but could be quite useful if we do start to struggle for those under-20 options. And also, the big first-team transfer that we did going into this new season was Tim Anderson, formerly of Western Suburbs the last couple of seasons, of the save. They let him go off the back of 88 appearances, and we've picked him up on a free, and he will be partnering Oli McGoldrick at centre-back for this upcoming season with the departure of Tio De Miro, is just above Georgios Victoros on the all-whites pecking order for selection, and is quite young as well. At 24 years old, his face there does kind of look like a bit of a footballing Bowden Barrett. But anyway, Tim Anderson, the big signing we made going into this new season here at Kashmir Tech. Pretty good centre back, a local. That does mean it frees up a foreign spot for either the bench or another area if we find an upgrade throughout the rest of the season, especially before we get stuck in to the Southern League and National League Championship itself. As we know, we usually do sign a few more players about halfway through the season. So those are the transfers we have made this guy. The big addition, quite good with both feet as well, which is very nice indeed, albeit we have made a change because of the fact that we have signed him. He's not very good as a ball-playing defender, and neither is McGoldrick. So because of that, going to just play both our centre-backs now as central defenders. I think for a while we actually did this up at AFC Auckland, but no more ball-playing defender. Hopefully... That won't hurt us too much. We'll still be quite good on attack and maybe a bit more solid in defence. But there's our squad. Mansour Dossier is the starting right back for the Champions League. 
domestically that would change Harrison. Debenhamer came for our youth and take last season, under-20 player. So he would usually start at right back and alongside him, the other under-20 player for this season is Wally Khaled, still under-20, is the Egyptian right winger. So those are the players who keep us up to quota for the under-20s. But apart from that, pretty settled side compared to what we had late last season. And first up in the Champions League, we take on Kiwi Samoa. Half a star reputation. They predicted to finish eighth in the Samoan League. So this is definitely a team we should be beating. Albeit we should be beating everyone by lots of goals here in the Champions League group stage with the hot favourites for this competition. Like is always the case here at Kashmir. Technical this one is at the GMP. So unfortunately no bus trip there over in Samoa. But hopefully can pick up a good win here. Show you guys while we'll be topping our group and go forward a bit off the back of this and then see who we're going to be taking on on our road to yet another OFC Champions League here at Kashmir Tech. And we'll start things off by taking on Kiwi. And here are the team sheets for this first game of the OFC Champions League in 2035. There's our team, the big changes we ran through before Tim Anderson coming in from Western Suburbs on a free and switching to two central defenders instead of one of them being a ball playing defender. There are Kiwi 5 2 2 1, I think it looked like there for those guys. So, a very defensive setup, as you'd imagine, because they're taking us on the red hot favourites for the Champions League, especially with this game being played at the GMP. Let's see if it turns into a bloodbath like quite a few of our group games have in the past, especially over the last couple of seasons. Early highlight, though, is in favour of Kiwi, but to be fair, they try and float that one far post. It's way too deep, and Josh Hawkins. He can come out and claim it, plays it out there to Anderson, gets an early touch here in his competitive debut. I think that was Evans who played it forward there before it goes back to McGoldrick. Now Sam Clark just takes his time here on the ball before playing that one out to Xavier Smith. Very close now to becoming a New Zealand citizen and an all-whites option. Tackle there, the ball goes out to Mansour Dassault, but it's rather fortunate. Tries to flip that one far post there looking for Siad Yellow. Not that good a ball, but Xavier Smith is there to tidy things up, plays that one into the mixer. It was very, very undangerous, that ball. But Zilao Tavelli will put that one away into the back of his own net. That is a very average start, that from Kiwi. This ball, I'm pretty sure, was going straight into the path of the goalkeeper who was diving for it. Indeed, that is the case with an early own goal to put us 1-0 in front. And we've waited until the 15 minute mark for the next highlight of this game. So it's taken a while here for us to get the highlights here. With that slight technical change, good chance there for the guy on debut. And Anderson comes off the woodwork, but then it is the Ciardiello who gets us back on the ball, squares it. And Juan Carlos Castro, of course, back from that suspension, which kept him out of the last couple of games of the National League last season. With a very simple finish, Anderson there, nearly with a debut goal. But thankfully, they hit that one straight out to Ciardiello, who took the corner. Pretty average defence there to not pick up on that ball before it finds Castro for an easy tap in and we turn it up after only 15 minutes. And only a few minutes on from that second goal, it's a front here for Kiwi. It's a really poor one though. They give it to Khaled who can do a first time cross there looking for CR Diallo but unfortunately he misses the target. Still 2-0 Kashmir. And in fact only a few minutes on from that great chance to CR Diallo to make it 3-0. It is Khaled who's picked up an orange injury. We'll play things safe here. Take him off for Torrey. Nah. Still with a 2-0 lead. And short the flag of that first substitution. Now it's a frown for us here inside of the final third. Mansell Dossiaw will float this one far post. And this time Ciardiello will hit the target. Big chance around the 20 minute mark to make it 3-0 this time. Gets it low enough to beat Roberts there in goal. And we're starting to really put the foot down here against our Samoan opposition. Looking pretty good early stages here of the Champions League. Even though just in the one week of pre-season heading into it. 3-0 with still 60 minutes left. And a little bit disappointingly, that was all the highlights there for the first half. Nothing happening off the back of that third goal, which we did score through Ciardiello, even though, as you can tell there by the XG match story, we have created quite a few chances. Most players out there, though, are doing well. We did, of course, use that one sub on Khaled with that orange injury. But Dossiao, a bit of a deep yellow heart. So I think we'll play things safe here and take him off. Harrison Debenham can come on our youth and take star from last season. Pretty decent potential even in the national pool. So let's give him some good game time here this season and bring him on for the second half of this Champions League opener. We're looking pretty well in control with a 3-0 lead and a very early highlight here in the second half. They pumped that one deep there. I imagine it was Kiwi 
and Clark is there to tidy things up. McGoldrick just starts to creep his way forward before playing that one out there to Xavier Smith, who you would have thought would have been the play getting that ball instead of our deep line playmaker in Sam Clark. Eventually, we find the debutant in Anderson and now Debenham his first competitive game as well here at Kashmir Tech. Nice ball there for Lorenzo Johnson. Bumps that one into the wood. Unfortunately, can't quite hit the target. Still 3-0 early in the second half. And off the back of that, he'll get another chance here from a free kick. It goes wide. Still 3-0. And we've just gone past the hour mark in this game for our next title. It's a goal kick there to Kiwi. But we do actually win that ball in the air, albeit give it straight back to them. Pierces there to tidy things up. Portly though, slow on the ball. And Janssen can win it off him now. Nah. Plays that one across there to Ciardiello. Cuts inside before finding Torre. Nah. Just inside of the box. Looks to square that one there for someone. But Leo, he can claim it. Louis Evans is there to tidy things up for us, albeit back near the halfway line. We'll switch this one out to the left-hand side where Xavier Smith starts to make his way forward. I think Ciardiello there almost got in his way, but thankfully he still finds one Carlos Castro who will sweep that one home. And there's our first goal of the second half to make it 4-0. Some good patient play there. Lots of time there on the ball, as has been the case so far in the second half. A couple of chances to Lorenzo Janssen. Eventually is one Carlos Castro, though who makes it 4-0. And only a few minutes on from that fourth goal, maybe now the floodgates are going to start to open up here in the second half, because it's a throw for us here inside of the Kiwi half. Debenham got that ball, albeit not quite as wide as you'd imagine. We can play it for to now there, and Debenham will get it back. Nice ball float there, far post for Castro. It goes back out there to Sam Clark. Good chance on the volley, but unfortunately just blazes that one over the top right corner. It did apparently, according to commentary, clip the crossbar, but it is still 4-0 off the back of that there, Kiwi. Did I think of a free kick, but they pumped that one far too deep. And Josh Hawkins can claim that one safely. He's doing okay there on a 7.0. Oh, about to make our way into the last 20 minutes. So probably not too long until we should make our last couple of substitutions. But before then, might look to make this one 5-0 as we start to inch our way here into the opposition half. Xavier Smith having a good game. Starts to creep his way onto the edge of the box. Johnson goes down. No penalty, but thankfully still on the ball as they clear one out there. To Debenham, long range effort, looking for the top left corner. It comes off the crossbar. That would have been some debut goal there from our youth intake player, but unfortunately, the woodwork comes to the rescue of Kiwi. About to make our way into the last 20 minutes of this game. Still 4-0, and now I think it's time for us here to make some subs. Only a couple of players not on green ratings will take them off. So Lee Evans, he can come off for Marcus Vinicius and also McGoldrick. Let's bring on Isaac Hughes in his place. I think everyone else out there. Should be fine. We'll leave that last sub for when someone gets a bit more tired. 4-0 with 15 minutes left. And we're just about into the last 10 minutes of this game. There's a goal kick here to Kiwi. But yet again, that one is not going to find one of their teammates. And someone there headed that one down to Torek. Now it went out there to Ciardiello, Xavier Smith. And now it goes across there to one of the substitutes. And Isaac Hughes, Debenham, back on the ball here. And it goes out there to Torek. Now, edge of the box. Good tackle. But rather fortunately, we do keep hold of the ball now. We'll float that one into the mixer, albeit Kiwi actually here with a chance to do something on the counter-attack. Can they get a goal out of this game in the last 10 minutes to try and close the gap? Be fair, would have thought we might have been these guys by a bigger margin. Maybe that's the difference between a ball-playing defender and two central defenders. So maybe if we continue to struggle for goals here in the group stage of the Champions League, might need to switch back to the ball-playing defender, even though doesn't really suit our two best centre backs these days. Harrison Debenham with an assist on debut, but to be fair, most of that was done by Lorenzo Johnson. That's a long range worm burner there from him from well outside the box into the bottom left corner, and that will make it 5 0. And he finally gets on the score sheet here. Does our Australian central attacking midfielder, who these days could play for the All Whites, just doesn't want to yet. Could have been at the World Cup, but for some reason felt like he had a better chance of playing for Australia which he didn't. That makes it 5-0, and now Sam Clark goes down to a red heart. So our last sub, Tristan Turner, can come on him, but this one, all wrapped up, should be making our way through this group pretty comfortably. And it might be another chance here for Lorenzo Johnson from a free kick, which he is, just tying his shoes up before it looks like there from the highlight or something, because this is taking quite a while. Eventually, he lines up quite similar spot to the one at the 50-minute mark this time. Comes off the Woodwork Debenham with a chance for a debut goal, but that, I think, got blocked by a defender in Roberts. He can claim that safely, and that looks like it might do it for this game. We've been very dominant. Probably could have scored more 
than five goals. Late highlight here though for Kiwi from a free kick. And Liddy will put that one home, but well offsides that will not count. To be fair, by the time Hawkins takes the free kick, that should do it. It's a 5 0 win in our first game of the Champions League this season, I think. Castro got a double. The opener, of course, was a known goal. And then there were also goals to Jansen as well. Is Ciar Diallo with that third goal for a header in the first half. So a pretty solid win for us there. I felt like could have been a bit more dominant. But as I said, maybe that's the two central defenders instead of one ball playing defender. But that is a very solid win. First up in the Champions League should be topping this group. So I'll go forward to get through the rest of this group and also get through that second part of the group phase of the Champions League. We'll come back, recap it, and then see who we'll be taking on in the quarters and the semis. So a good solid win for us there, first up in the OFC Champions League this season, and thankfully that continued as you'd expect throughout the rest of the group stage. The second match day, we beat AS Parade 5-0, a quite good result for us there, especially because that was with a full rotation goals there, the Greenwich, a double daring, and also Turner and Marcus Vinicius, they got on the score sheet. Kiwi, they beat Kagua Olave in the other game on that day, 4-1 on the opening day, it was a draw between Kagua Olave and AS Parade, so at that point, Kiwi actually found themselves second in the group. But final match day, goal fest there in the first game. Kiwi got five, Ali with four of them, but AS Parade, thanks to a Bernal hat trick and quite a few others popping up with goals, they beat them 8-5. As I said, absolute goal fest. We are actually a bit scrappy against Kagua Arave. 3-0, took us a wee while to put them away, and stats-wise, we should have won that game by about eight. So a little bit shy on goals so far in the Champions League here this season with Kashmir Tech, but we win all three of our games and are going through alongside Parade thanks to their 8-5 win over Kiwi. On the final match day, Group B, which took place around the same time as our games, the Solomon Warriors won all three of theirs. They go through Top Tafia, are a team that we could take on in the quarters. Bar just miss out as do Ticket Sport. Then we go for a week off the back of that. When these other groups did take place, Group C, Waniagu, perfect record. They topped the Group A. East Lossy, we could take on in the quarters. And I'm pretty sure we haven't taken them on yet, so that could actually be quite a good tie for the quarters. The Blue Kumuls and Hamoko, they have been knocked out. And Group D was where Auckland City were. They go through and actually with a slightly better goal differential than we had with Kashmir Tech. So that's a little bit concerning, but they go through alongside AS Dragon who we could take on in the quarters, La Bassa and the Tiamo Academy. They have been knocked out. So those are results from the group stages of the Champions League. Stipe Ukic in that game there against the Academy popped up with five goals. So it does look like he's in quite dangerous form off the back of being suspended for that New Zealand National League final after the red card that he picked up against us in that final game of the league season. But now it's time for us to do both the draw for the quarter and the semi of the Champions League. First up out of the hat, it is us. I wouldn't mind AS Lossy. I think we've already played Tafia and AS Dragon before in the knockouts of the Champions League. Lossy, I don't think we have. And that is who we get. So a new team will be taking on in the quarterfinals. Just need to check when that is, if that's what we're coming back for in tomorrow's episode. Auckland City, they will take on Tafia. When they argue, they will take on AS Parade from our group. And that leaves us all in Warriors to take on AS Dragon. So AS Lossy in the quarters should get past those guys pretty comfortably, being only a one-star reputation club from New Caledonia. But now it's time to get stuck in to the draw for the semis. Will we get Auckland City before the final yet again? First up, it is Auckland City or Tafia against Waniagu or AS Parade. It's looking pretty good for an all-New Zealand final the first time in a long time. We'll be taking on the other New Zealand team in the final in the Champions League, which I don't know if I like, because it does mean they could beat us in one game and we miss out on a Champions League toll. I did quite like taking them on over two legs. Thought there was a better chance of us beating them. Not going to be able to do that this season. Going to have to beat them in the final. So hopefully we can do that if Auckland City can make it that far. And us as well, because we'd have to get past one of the Solomon Warriors or AS Dragon in these semis. But that will do it for today's episode. Got through the group stage there of the Champions League and also a couple of transfers. And our path to the final has been revealed. It does look like it's going to be a showdown between us 
and Auckland City. You day again, if you enjoyed today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. Just check when the quarterfinal actually is. It's the 8th of April, so before then, we have got an international window with the All Whites. What we might do is show you guys the Australian friendly, because Japan, we fought them last time around. I'm just playing them, because we probably can make our way up the rankings by doing the same thing yet again with Australia. Haven't played them for a couple of years, and we're taking them on for the Soccer Ashes, even though they're lower ranked than Japan. We'll see what they are made of, and especially because they've got a new manager, and Ufuk Tale, that is a very interesting appointment previously. I think it was De Beer or someone like that who was in charge. Now it's Ufuk who is managing Australia. That's going to be quite interesting. I do fancy my chances now of beating those guys again for these soccer issues. So I think we'll come back, play that game, and then go forward, show you guys highlights of Japan and make our way through the quarterfinals against AS Lossy as well. So hopefully you can kill two birds with one stone in tomorrow's episode. So until then, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers.